Welcome everyone to another Basics and First Steps video. This is only gonna be a one-part video where I explain you how to find your way around in Democracy 3 and give you the basics you need to eventually master this game. Democracy 3 is a political simulation where you manage policies of a certain country in order to be re-elected. It's an icon and text-based strategy game that provides fun and a theoretical insight to consequences of certain political decisions. For the sake of this guide, we're going to enable the random start box in the options menu, which will give us random starting situations and policies. We're also going to disable assassinations to avoid being assassinated by a political group that freakishly hates us and prematurely end this tutorial. Let's start a new game and choose our country. I'm going to choose Canada because it deals with less population and therefore less income and thus the numbers are a tad more manageable. You may now choose names for your and your opponent's party or just name them yourself. If you want you can adjust the term length in years and how many times you may be re-elected. There's also difficulty setting and some other settings which we're gonna leave to the default value for now. Once we start the game, we will be presented with a welcome report where we find the most important situations and their status. There's the GDP, our health and education situation and down below we have unemployment, crime and poverty. Now a lot of the time the confusing part of this game is that full bars don't always mean good and green bars also don't always mean good. In this situation we want the bars of the upper row to be as full as possible and of course we want the situations in the lower row to lower and dissolve. But more of the confusion later. Let's begin term of office. The first time you look at this next screen you might think what the heck have I gotten myself into but soon you will realize how ingenious this screen actually is. Let's first focus our attention to the top left of the screen. The first icon represents your political capital which is essentially the currency you spend to change and institute policies. Your political capital is produced by your ministers every turn and depending on their interests and your decisions they will produce more capital for you. But more about the ministers later. Just as a side note, since this is a turn based game and we have chosen one term length to be 4 years, we will have 12 turns time to convince the voters to re-elect us. Thus one turn represents 3 months which is 4 turns per year. Next up we have our income and expenditure which we may click on and check on what the heck we're spending so much money for but again more to that later. At a 100% difficulty you will also start with a slight deficit and a debt you will have to get under control. And this is where you will come in. Increasing or introducing taxes may be one way to solve your problems but you can also tend to the needs and issues of your country and make it more cost efficient. I will let you know more about the icons on the right side of the screen later. Let's first try to find out more about our voters and what affects them. In the center of the screen you can see all political tendencies of the population. A light grey bar behind it indicates how much of the population belongs to this particular group of voters. Now it is important to note that one voter can be part of several groups, e.g. a socialist could also be a commuter and my decisions for either group will affect this particular voter. If you hover over a group long enough, all non-relevant factors will vanish and you will start to see the dependencies and what is connected with each other. Hovering over the retired for instance, we can see that they are positively influenced by state pensions and benefits in healthcare and such, but they dislike crime and certain taxes. So now we can check for each political voter group what factors are relevant to win them over or piss them off. One thing to note is that the faster the connection is moving, the more impact this factor has, as a result of which changing it will have a higher effectiveness. So far so good, but what do all these icons do and what are the colors for? I'm glad you asked. First up we have the blue icons, those represent situations, states and statistics within your country which you can only influence indirectly by applying policies. For instance our country has a certain amount of bus usage which again is influenced by various situations and policies which are again affected by other situations and policies and will either 
please or piss off certain groups. Next up, we have the white icons or the actual policies. Those are the things that you can change directly and have more or less relevant impact on other factors. Important to know is that the policies do not affect other policies. They only affect blue or red icons, which I'm gonna talk about in a sec. At every game start, you will be provided with certain policies in your repertoire, but you can institute more by clicking the little light bulb in the top right navigation bar. But let's come back to that in a minute. Lastly, we have the red icons, which represent major issues in the country. For instance, we currently have an alcohol abuse problem and even an anti-social behavior problem. That's not good at all and something we need to address ASAP. Unfortunately, just like the blue icons, we cannot influence the red ones directly, but we can do so by sorting out the policies, increasing our budget and solving the country's problems to win over the voters. Politics in Democracy 3 is divided up into seven different categories. Transport, law and order, public services, taxes, economy, welfare and foreign policies. We seem to be having the most issues in the law and order department, so let's find out what's causing them. Vigilant mob seems to be something we should address immediately. Hovering over it, we can clearly see that the crime level has the most impact on it. Now this is where the red and green colors get a little bit confusing. Green simply means that it's increasing whatever factor it's pointing to. So in this case, crime is increasing vigilant mobs and even though police and CCTV cameras are red, they are actually good because they decrease vigilant mobs. So concluding that, for each red icon you want to support the red or decreasing factors and diminish the green or increasing factors. For the blue icon, it's a little bit of a different story. You have to decide whether or not a blue icon is something good or not. For instance, health is something we want to be high. So we want to increase green and decrease red factors. On the other side, e.g. for poverty, which is a bad thing and we want to get rid of, we want to increase the red and decrease the green factors. I hope with these examples some of the initial confusion could be lifted there, but let me tell you, once we apply changes to policies, we'll take the confusion to a whole new level. So let's take the first steps towards solving the vigilant mobs issue by clicking on the icon. We will be presented with a list of factors that are causing the problem and the list of factors that are the consequences, uh, may they be positive or negative. On the right of the graph we can see how far we have to get the situation under control until it is resolved. So we will be stuck with the problem until we adjust policies in a way so that the graph reaches the green line. In the causes list we can clearly see that crime has the most impact on this situation. So that's where we will start fixing the country. As you can see also here, green doesn't necessarily mean good, it means increasing. And for a thing such as crime, we don't want that. You can use the list as links and by clicking crime we will be pointed to the according GUI. We will encounter a similar interface as before, but this time with a lot more causes to deal with. Remember, since it's crime, we seek to diminish green factors and increase red factors. Let's look out for the green factors first and we will find that antisocial behavior and alcohol abuse have a vast impact on the problem and are something that we can actually quite easily deal with. Let's click on alcohol abuse in the list and we will see that the major cause for that of course is alcohol consumption, which is the thing we want to decrease to initiate this whole chain reaction all the way up to vigilant mobs. Click alcohol consumption in the list where we will be presented with two policy options, thus us being able to have a real impact on it. The alcohol law and alcohol taxes. Since I'm not a big fan of taxes, let's go with the alcohol law and see what we can do there. Once you open up a policy, you will have additional options such as a slider. 
Moving it back and forth will show you the forecast of the change you made. Important things to note are the implementation delay indicated on the top, which essentially means some changes take a few turns to fully apply, and the policy goes down at the bottom, which depending on the policy might heavily affect your budget. Well, so I don't really care about alcohol and I don't have to live in the fracked up country I'm going to make here, so let's set the slider all the way up and have a really harsh law on the alcohol. Immediately we can see that through this change we will be able to lower alcohol consumption by 50%, heck yeah! We will also heavily piss off the liberals and the youth. Though the youth doesn't vote anyways and the liberals we will please with other stuff later on. This change will also have a minor impact on violent crime, which in my opinion is ignorable. Applying this change will cost us 13 political capital, which can be seen to the left of the buttons. You also have the ability to cancel certain policies altogether if you wish to do so. So let's apply the change and see what we can do next. This decision left us with 11 political capital to spend, so let's see what else needs improving. In the welfare section we can see that we have a homelessness problem, which we can have a look into. Homelessness seems to be mainly caused by unemployment and poverty, one of which we can actually do something against in the short term. Unfortunately, we don't have the policy yet that comes into my mind, so let's search for it in the Policies Idea tab I showed you quickly before. In the Public Services tab, you'll find the policy called Free School Meals. This policy will cost us only a few millions per quarter and will decrease poverty by a lot. So let's institute that policy and move the slider all the way up to the top and we will be able to see its effects. Now of course so far we are only applying policies that will cost us even more and potentially increase our deficit, but my thinking here is that if we decrease poverty, we will have more people working and therefore more people paying taxes. Also if we decrease alcohol abuse and crimes related to that, we'll have to spend less money on vandalism and crime in general. So now that we have no political capital left, all we can do is investigate the situation even more or just move on to the next quarter where we will be able to see what effects our changes had and what other pressing issues are coming up. So let's click the next button. Once you finish a turn, you will be given a quarterly report where you again can check out the main stats of your country. There will also be several other pressing matters you might be interested in. Most turns you will have to make a political decision that is mostly binary and completely the opposite opinion. In our case, we're being asked if we should institute the policy that would allow the police to search people on the street when they're behaving suspiciously. Allowing this would probably decrease crime and maybe make the conservatives like us more, but the real effects of these decisions can't really be seen. Since we're going for a more liberal approach, I would say we're not going to allow this. This will not help our crime situation, but alas, we have other ways of dealing with things. Next up we have some reports you can have a look into if you want to. There's usually an economic forecast, a budget report, a pulse report, security briefing and the cabinet report. They are pretty self-explanatory and maybe the most interesting one is the pulse report as it gives you an indication on how popular you currently are amongst the voters. Of course we first have to fight our way up but we have 11 more turns to convince the people before election day. If we have a look at the alcohol consumption now, we will already be able to see a significant change. And looking at the alcohol law policy we changed in turn 1, we can see that the full effects will still take 4 turns to really take over. So we can assume alcohol consumption will gradually decrease over the next 4 turns, giving us time to spend capital on other matters. Now that 3 months have passed, we might be interested in the changes our country is going under. Open up the Opinions Poll tab. This will provide you further information about your voters. The first tab indicates the groups amongst which you are the most popular. In my case, the retired and state employees are very fond of me. You can even dig further by going to the Focus Group tab and check out random persons out of your average voters and displaying their tendencies and opinions towards you. 
Within the Policies tab, you can see which policies are the most and least popular amongst your voters. And of course, like everything else, you can click on them and directly make adjustments to improve your popularity. In the end, it's all about getting re-elected. There's also a Compass tab, which shows you your general political tendencies during the whole course of the game. So that will be interesting later on. What I really wanted to go for is the Changes tab, which shows us the positive and negative tendencies our country is going through. As you can see, we were able to decrease poverty, violent crime and alcohol consumption. We were also able to increase the poor earnings. Now, unfortunately, the GDP went down as something we'd like to go up eventually, and the tourism went down as well. But those are matters we shall address in the future. So, we weren't yet able to do much about the crime situation, but we shall fix that right now. Instituting a new policy from the Law and Order tab called Commuting Policing will allow us to have a heavy impact on our crime matter and some people will even like this kind of policy. Since we want to have a heavy impact with this policy, we want to support it as much as possible, still watching our budget. As you can see, it will have a huge impact on antisocial behavior and alcohol abuse, which is perfect, and the liberals will adore us for it. Great. One more thing we could tackle in this turn is the organized crime issue, which we have more or less ignored so far. Gambling seems to be a major cause for organized crime and doesn't yield enough benefits in my eyes, so I'm going to limit gambling activities, thus reducing organized crime. Even though it's going to cost me 19 points of political capital, I think it's worth it in the long run. Fortunately, I was wrong and the policy could be lowered for only 14 capital, which leaves us with 11 more to do some minor adjustments. First of all, I'm going to increase the Race Discrimination Act to the max, which almost only has positive effects, such as less racial tensions, and the liberals and ethnic minorities will love us for it, screw the conservatives, and it only costs one measly political capital. Last but not least, we're going to try and decrease poverty and unemployment even more by introducing yet another policy from the Public Services tab called Free Eye Tests, which pretty much does the same thing as free school meals. With only two political capital left, there's not much we can do in this turn, so it's time to end our second turn and move on another three months to check out our quarterly report. As usual, we will have to make an important, urgent decision. This time it's about the freedom we grant people about the information we keep about them. Again, allowing more investigation and information gathering about people would most likely help us reduce crime and such in the long run. But I don't like the idea of being spied on very much, so we're also going to reject this policy. We can also observe a slight increase in voters that are on our side, so we certainly move on in the right direction. Let's start our third turn. Another quick look on the changes table will show us that we're indeed doing a good job and are mostly in the green numbers now, at least for now, so let's see what other problems we can tend to. Now that we slowly but surely know in which direction we're going, I think it's time to tend to our ministers. As you can see, not all of our ministers are as productive in terms of political capital, and some are even starting to dislike us for our decisions. Silly. That's not good. We want ministers that are more or less on the same page as we are, so we're gonna be radical and reshuffle the whole freaking cabinet. Alternatively, you may also fire individual ministers, but this will temporarily reduce the loyalty of other ministers because they fear for their jobs. So I tend for a reshuffle after a few turns and assign them myself. Right now, we're producing 24 capital each turn. I'm sure we can bump that up to almost 30 and get ministers going that will vastly improve with our decisions over time. So let's reshuffle the cabinet and see what options we have. Click on the Show Potential Ministers button to see the candidates. Right off the bat, we can see that Dear Ethan here is producing a nice amount of capital and seems to be the perfect candidate. But to the right, we can see that his political tendencies lie in religion and patriotism, which are two groups we're not gonna please in the long run, at least religion, not at all. This means that Ethan here will eventually start to hate us and is not a good option. 
But on the other hand, Paul Chuck down here in the list might just be what we are looking for. He only produces 3.9 capital each turn, but because we're going to make decisions that are going to improve the popularity with his groups, this is going to improve over time and will be worth it in the long run. We can also see that his dream jobs are economy, welfare or law and order, so we can assign him to any of these jobs really. Going back to the cabinet screen, we can choose any of these three jobs. Uh, let's just go with economy and hire Chuck to deal with it. So now I'm going to rinse and repeat this pattern until we have a full cabinet again and I'll be right back to introduce you to the lucky ones. Alright, here we have our new ministers that will provide 28 capital each turn and hopefully improving with our decisions each turn. All the groups our ministers support are the ones that I want to support in the long run and that's why I've chosen them. Maybe at some point we will realize that we cannot support all the groups we meant to but we can still fire our ministers one by one if needed. It might be worth noting that with increasing experience and effectiveness the ministers will enforce policies in their area faster. So setting up ministers that will be on the same page with you is definitely worth it. If we have a look at our icons again, we can see that the crime and alcohol problems are drastically going downwards and we can wait a turn or two to take more measures in this area. Much more pressing to me seems the pollution problem our country has. We can see that pollution is caused by factors of the environment, such as CO2 emissions, which is related to car usage and so on and so forth. Since we're going to be a bit more commuter friendly, we're going to institute bus subsidies that will hopefully increase the amount of commuter we have as well as improve poverty and unemployment a tad. Let's save the 6 capital we have left for the next round and take them over. Within your minister screen you can see how much potential political capital you can have at one time, which for us is 48, so we can easily take over these 6 points without losing any. And check out our quarterly report. So health seems to be going up, crime down and poverty down, that's pretty good I would say. This report special event is a stolen painting which happened due to our high crime level and relatively low police force, but that's fine, we're, we're dealing with it eventually. We've won over 25% of the voters, which if you remember went up 11% from 14% in the beginning. So let's get things rolling even more in this turn. One problem we should tackle in this turn is the homelessness and unemployment issue. A very effective way of doing this for instance would be to increase the unemployment benefits. It will be expensive and we're still in a deficit, so we will need to introduce some new taxes as well by doing this. Since we don't really care about the rich at this moment, we might as well tax them a little bit by introducing luxury taxes. Now these sort of taxes will eventually cause another problem called brain drain, where the intelligent and rich people will search for a job in another country, but we freaking paid for their education in this country. But once we get into those sorts of problems, we can always reduce or cancel the policy again. Since we only have 5 capital left, there's not much left to do. We could theoretically increase our police force just to help with our crime issue a little bit faster and then end our turn to check out the quarterly report. Alright, so now we know enough about the game that we can move on a bit faster in the tutorial and get at least to one election day to wrap it up. Already over 40% of the voters are on our side now according to the polls report, which is sweet. Today's decision is banning religious symbols such as headgear and crosses or such. Nope, we're not gonna ban it and move on. If we look at the homelessness situation, we will be able to see that it's below the green line now dramatically. This means after the next turn we will have gone rid of this problem and our country will officially be a country with no homelessness problem. The same counts for alcohol abuse and antisocial behavior. I predict that next turn we will be doing great. So in this turn I'm going to increase micro generation grants and lower the road maintenance to help the environment and keep the rest of the capital to carry over. As I predicted, we got rid of three of our problems, lowered the deficit a little bit and convinced another 10% of the population to vote for us. What a life! 
In this turn, it's time to do something for the liberals, which is going to be to teach evolution over creationism only. This is mostly the point where some crazy religious groups start to assassinate you and such, and it's incredibly expensive to change as well, so that's going to be our only decision for this turn. From the looks of it, we will also be getting rid of vigilant mobs in the next turn. And there you have it, we managed to get rid of vigilant mobs and we also got ourselves a religious condemnation. Holy cow, time to move on. I'm now going to move on to the election day and will show you the results of my decisions. So the tutorial part of this game is uh, pretty much at an end at this point. Now it's up to you to find out all about the dependencies and what is connected with what to improve your decisions. I will see you in a bit. Alright guys, we are now within the turn before election day and we just managed to get rid of the brain drain situation that developed and I mentioned by simply removing the luxury taxes again. I've spent a ton of points in research and science support which enabled me to get technological advantages over other countries and therefore we were able to make a scientific discovery. Also our credit rating gets upgraded and we have won over 81% of the population. <laughs> Heck yeah. What have I been doing, you ask? Well, changing policies and instituting new ones. This time I went for solving all of our problems by introducing recycling, rail subsidized to set an end to pollution, introduced youth clubs, subsidizes and small business grants to win over the youth and the self-employed and I started to invest more into science funding to increase productivity and end our uncompetitive economy problem. All in all, quite a few successful years we had, and now it's time to find out how the people are gonna vote. As you can see, we now also have a green icon for the first time, which is the things that run particularly nice in your country. Well, I'm not gonna do anything else, I just want to go straight to the election results and hopefully we will be able to take on another term and improve the country even more. Don't forget that you may play this game however you please. The decisions I made were not necessarily the ones I'd welcome in my country, but you can be totally liberal or create a police state. It's really up to you. And with our election won, I say thanks a lot for watching and hopefully I will catch you the next time. Bye bye.